In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the 2024 AP Physics 1 exam. And for this video in particular, we are checking out the first question of the FRQ section. So for our first question over here, it says um, we have a block of mass M and it's released at rest at point A, a height of 6R above the horizontal. After being released, the block slides down a track as shown when released from point A. The block does not lose contact with the track at any point. Points B and C are located at the highest points of their respective loops, both of radius R. All frictional forces are negligible. So in my drawing, I went ahead and labeled a couple of the main things that they mentioned. Everything starts from rest. So as I'm taking a look at this question, it reminds me a lot of a lot of roller coaster concepts and obviously a lot of energy things as well. And if we have a V naught of zero meters per second, we have no kinetic energy, all potential energy. And then I went ahead and marked the heights of spots B and C because we have half a radius going up and then another half to complete the diameter of that circle. And then the same thing over here, 2R for the actual circle with the additional 2R below it with a height of 4R for part C. And there is no friction, so we're not worried about any thermal energy or anything like that. It'll probably be clean transitions from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy. Now, with that being said, um, here is our first question. It's asking us um, to draw in diagram B, basically uh, coloring in the amount of gravitational potential energy and the amount of kinetic energy. And when I took a look at my first bar graph over here, I noticed that it went up one, two, three, four, five, six dashes up the chart. So it was six R, it was a six R height, which means that each little dotted line would be representative of a single radius. Now at point B, we were at a height of two R. So then obviously then I would go two dash lines up to represent a height of two R. And then because of the conservation of energy, I want to make sure I have basically six little blocks of energy total, which means that I go up four blocks for my kinetic energy to make sure the energy is conserved overall. All right, going down to our next one, B is definitely a little tougher. It says, starting with the conservation of energy, derive an expression for the speed, which is basically the velocity of block at point B. Express your answers in terms of R and physical constants as appropriate. Begin your derivation by writing a fundamental physics principle or an equation from the reference book. So I take a look at my formula sheet, and plus I already have this one in mind, work equals delta E. We have no work. Uh, no external forces acting on our system here. And we have the final minus initial as our delta E. So which is basically the energy of position B minus the energy of position A. And then those can be set equal to each other to show that energy is conserved. Now at our first position, as I said before, it starts at rest. So we have one half mv squared for the kinetic energy, which is zero joules. And then for the gravitational potential energy, it's supposed to be MGH, and our first H is 6R. Now for our second location, um, it has a height of 2R. So instead of MG6R, I replace that with a 2R. And we are going to have some kinetic energy, so it's going to be 1 half MV squared. But one of the masses got dropped anyways because there's an M in every expression here. So it's just 1 half V squared for now. Um, so all I did is subtract uh, G times 2R from both sides, which after I minus or subtracted G2R from G6R, I got G4R equals 1 half V squared. So multiplied both sides by 2, brought it up here, square root it, and then I got a final answer of square root of G times 8R. And then if you wanted to um, pull out the 2 in front, you could do that. I, I would guess that it wouldn't matter anyways. All right, going to the very last portion of this, it says um, on the following dot that represents the block, draw and label the forces, not components that are exerted on the block at the instant the block slides through point C. So point C is basically the top of a loop. So it's kind of like the top of a roller coaster. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the dot. 
So I immediately knew that there was going to be an FG because there's always a force of gravity down. And then because the block is at the top of the loop, the loop is pushing perpendicular downward. Now, the thing I was wondering, though, was which is larger, the FN or the FG? Now, the way they worded it, I'm guessing it actually doesn't matter because it doesn't have a special note about the relative lengths of the vectors. So this is all just kind of an FYI, nothing to really worry about, though, as far as your scoring. So we know that these two, um, Fn and Fg, are going to be pointing towards the center of your circle because this is at the top of your loop. So these two would be pointing towards the center. Therefore, they are centripetal forces. So you can set that equal to mb squared over r. Now, long story short, um, v squared for um, point C is going to be G4R. The reason why it's G4R is because if you scroll up here before we subtracted G2R, but then we'd actually be subtracting G4R for point C. So if we change this G2R to a G4R, then I would subtract 4R from 6r, which would leave g2r that I'd multiply by 2, and then that would end up being g4r for my final answer. Now, it's the square root of g4r, so if you take v squared, it basically just removes the root, and then you have g4r. So then our r's cancel, then we have fn plus mg equals 4mg, and then that would be the normal force is 3mg, which means that my vector for Fn should be larger. But again, the question didn't specify and ask for the relative size of the vectors to be proportional to the amount of force. So I don't think they're going to be grading that. And then for our final one, it says um, a student claims that 4R is the minimum height of point A such that block can slide down through point C without losing contact with the track after the block is released from rest briefly explain why this claim is correct. So you want to make sure you pay attention to the keywords. I don't particularly like explaining. I'd rather just write out some formulas and show it that way, but they're asking me to explain. So I'm going to go ahead and use my words the best I can. So I wrote the total amount of energy would be mg4r because the object starts at rest. So that's the total amount of energy. And then at point C, the height is 4r. So it has the same gravitational potential as point A. Therefore, there would be um, also have a velocity of zero meters per second. So if it has no velocity at the very top, then it would kind of just fall off. Um, so that would make it lose contact. And then, bam, it's over. Everything is all correct. So hopefully you did well on that, or hopefully you learned something to apply to a different test. Thanks for watching and listening.